Welcome to Accounting High. Check out the Cash Flow Show. We discuss topics like getting paid on time, profitability, and managing your bottom line, payroll best practices, the best apps to use, and cash flow forecasting tools. So if you're a small business owner, your help's right around the corner. Fret not. Tune in as Scott and Nicole help you reach your goals on the Cash Flow Show. The Cash Flow Show. What's up, Nicole? Hey, Scott. Good to see you as always. Today, we're going to talk about spending money. We're going to talk about areas which it's very important to spend money and spend the right amount. What are we talking about today on the Cash Flow Show, Nicole? Today, we are talking about the ROI of good accounting. And I wanted to talk about this one because lately I've been a little bit frustrated because we get prospects that come to us and they've been unprofitable or had very slim profit margins for like the last five years that they've been running their business. And I can look at their financials in like one minute and figure out what they're doing wrong. And I know that if they work with us, that the cost of working with us will end up being much less than the monetary value and time savings that they'll end up getting. So I get a little bit frustrated with the perception that business owners have in their and them not seeing the value in accounting. And I think part of it is our own fault, like the industry as a whole, we have not done a very good job of showing the value. And so a lot of times business owners, they'll either do it themselves or they'll have an office manager or spouse who's doing it or an in-house person. And not until they actually work with a team of professionals, do they understand the, the difference. Yeah. And why they, that this is a valuable place to spend their money rather than just throw it all away and on other frivolous things. This is, and we're going to talk about what is, what is the right amount that you should spend on accountant, uh, but also what should you expect to get back when you are spending it on an outsourced accountant or on a team like yours and momentum, what are they going to get out of that? Why is this an investment anyway? Like I thought they were just getting the work done. I thought you're just doing stuff that needs to get done. Are, Are we really investing in the company? What does that mean? Well, yeah, well, let's just first step back and then just talk about like, well, at least the way I think of everything that goes into a high functioning accounting department, like all the things that need to get done and all the people involved. Because when we work with clients, sometimes they may have an in-house resource who is doing a piece of it. So when we think about how much we're spending, it's good to think about it as, as a whole. So the way I define an accounting or finance department for a small business is and when I say small business, typically we're talking about a business that does under 10 million in revenue. They have someone that's doing the transactional level work, right? So that's just like booking your bank and credit card transactions in the accounting software. You've got someone who's managing the whole bill pay process. You've got someone who's managing invoice and collections. You got someone who's responsible for reporting and analysis. And that would be like your controller. Bigger businesses may have a CFO and that's someone who's responsible for anything forward looking. So bookkeeper, AP, AR, controller, CFO, and then we've got payroll admin, which would be like onboarding and offboarding employees, making sure your benefits are set up correctly, and then maybe expense reimbursement type things. So when you're thinking about the cost of your entire accounting department, that's what I'm talking about, all of those things and whether that be all in-house, all outsource, or a combination of both. And that's a lot of things too. So it's got to be hard to compartmentalize it if you've got one person doing something there and you guys are just picking up one or two. So each of these functions or each of these roles or responsibilities could be taken on by different people too. And you want to consolidate that. You want to be able to say, this one outsource department could take on all of this, right? Yeah. Well, I think what happens is you get people internally, they're a fixed cost, they're an employee. And so you assign them to do something because you don't want to pay an additional service provider for that. But what ends up happening is like, you're not really optimizing that resource for what they're best at. 
And so they are trying to do accounting when they don't have an accounting background. And what ends up happening is you don't end up getting financial information that's valuable for you because they don't know how to explain what a P&L is. They don't know how to explain what margins are or talk to you about pricing, right? And so while it may be not cost you any additional money, it's costing you resources. So what if we actually hired a professional that could come in and do the job and provide a lot more value? And then you could utilize that person somewhere else in the business. Or maybe you don't, maybe that person isn't valuable and you're just sticking them there because you're paying their salary and you don't want to let them go. Yeah. And that's a whole other conversation too, but also very important to have the right people in the right seats. So let's also get into the cost. What should this cost? Yeah. So typically I say that the cost of an accounting department should be, you should be spending anywhere between two to 4% of your revenue. And on the less side would be like a SaaS company. That's like a little bit easier depending on if they don't have revenue recognition. Professional service is a little bit easier. And then you get into clients that have inventory or like construction. That's going to be a little bit more expensive because you have more moving parts. But typically it's between two to 4% of revenue is what you want to be spending on all of those things that I just mentioned. So if you have a $3 million business, I think that ends up being like on the low end, 2% would be $60,000 a year. And then on the high end, that would be $120,000 per year. So probably a $3 million professional service type business doesn't need to be spending $120,000 per year on accounting. But if they hired an in-house controller, yeah, on accounting and finance, but if they hired an in-house controller, you know, that's what a controller might cost $120,000. So that's kind of one of the benefits of outsourcing is you don't have to pay for a full-time person, you can pay for exactly what you need and you can plug into other resources that you have on your team. Yeah. Fair, fair point. And that whole, that lower end of that, the low end, you may not be able to find somebody in-house for 60,000 to do everything you need them to do. So right. And probably the 60, even- $60,000 yeah. a year person's probably not going to be able to do some of the higher level things, right? That's going to give you more of a junior person. And then there's also the value of continuity. And so like if you have it, this happens all the time. We have clients or prospects that come to us. They have a bookkeeper or controller who ghosted them, who stole from them, who got too busy. And so they fall behind. And so by outsourcing, you've got like a team of people. And so someone at Momentum ends up leaving or gets you know, wins the lottery, right? I've got other people that we can plug in. We've got processes. We've got things documented. Did you say if somebody won the lottery, they would quit? (laughs) We were just talking about that yesterday at our team. I said- Don't they love their job? Wouldn't they still want to work? Yeah, right. No, I said I was going to put it in the employee handbook that they are not allowed to do a pulled lotto ticket because we were talking about how bad that would suck. Because you know people do that, right? They're all going on like a whole bunch of lotto tickets together and then they will split it if one wins. I'm like, you guys are not allowed to do that. No, 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 no. Yeah. Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just buy the ticket? Just buy the lotto ticket. What are they, like a dollar? No, but what you do, what people do is they'll buy like a hundred of them. It increases your odds of winning and then you all split the pot. If one of you wins, I've heard of that happening for like, usually it's Pete, your coworkers, right? Like if you worked at an office or something or on a job site together, you'd be like, Hey, let's go buy a lot of tickets and we'll all split it. We used to do that when I used to work in my old firm. You do different number on each ticket. Yeah. If it's a, like a pick. Yeah. Yeah. You just get like a hundred of them. Oh, wow. And then okay. you all split a pool, right? Cause it increases your odds. You'll, you'll end up getting less money out of it, but you'll- well, we're advising against this. Don't do this because <laughs> it's a nightmare if you end up winning. Yeah, right? don't, it's not even worth it. <laughs> no, you don't want all that money because then you wouldn't even be able. You wouldn't even be listening to the cash flow show. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. Yeah. So let's let's continue. My bad to take us off track. I just I heard the lotto comment and I said, well, they should love their job too. They could still do it for fun. Yeah, I mean, I think that's really savvy business owners, ones that go through business programs or get their MBA or just savvy business owners in general understand the value of like, this is a core function in any business that you need. And so they'll make sure it's handled. But there's a lot of business owners that maybe just don't understand all that goes into it. And again, like we as accountants, I think need to be better about showing the value about of, of what we do through either showing them what they can help them becoming more profitable or improving their cash flow or giving them back more time and showing them how we can do that for them. So as the accountant, what outcomes should they expect 
what kind of ROI? Remember, we said, what's the ROI of having an outsourced accountant or of this, you know, 60 to 120,000 that they'd be spending in, you know, you kind of went over the list of the things that would be done, but I'm not seeing how this is, where's the value? What's the outcome? Are they going to feel better about running their business? How are they going to feel after they spend that money? They know it's in good hands. They know it's safe. They know that if somebody leaves, it, there's redundancies. So they don't have to fear at night that their employee just, you know, made wind that they were going to be moving and possibly get in a relocation or another job or whatever. And the stress of that, they won't have to deal with that kind of stuff. So there's there's a lot of value in this. It's just about conveying it and having them understand what's the outcome. What should they expect? Yeah. We have a client that we've been working with probably for like six or seven years. But when he first when he first hired us, he was in the process of wanting to sell the business. That's why he brought us on. And then when we came on, he was, he's like the ops guy at the company, but his background is a CPA. So he was doing a lot of the accounting stuff and he was just over it, wanted to sell the business. And then when we came on and took away a lot of that, he was able to do things he enjoyed more. So he still hasn't sold the business to this day. But it's funny, I was with a group of business owners a couple of weeks ago and we were kind of complaining about like when we, when you get bored with your business, what do you do? And someone made a really good comment. He was like, we, we have this job right now. Or like, we are the only ones that have the ability to change our job title or put ourselves on a different somewhere else on the org chart. Like nobody else can do that. None of our employees can do that. So like, we shouldn't be complaining about it. We should be removing ourselves from the jobs we don't like. Should be and grateful. We should be grateful. Yeah. Like we're the only ones that can do this. So put if you don't like what you're doing, hire somebody, put somebody else in that box, and then you can change your job description anytime. We we have the power to do that as, as business owners. And that's that right there, those two stories or lessons here is why you should look at paying this kind of money for an outsourced accountant or outsource that role because then you're going to have more freedom to do the things you love and you're also you've got the ability to do that you can you don't have to do anything you don't want to do you just pay somebody else to do it in your business and then yeah. change your role i think one thing to be aware of too if you're an older business and you've never outsourced before is that you will have to do some internal reorganization to outsource to uh, a firm because there might be a little bit overlap on what they can do versus what you have somebody in-house doing. And then there's going to be things that they will not do that you, maybe your in-house bookkeeper or somebody did if they're taking over from them. So you have to be open to that, looking at that. Yeah, it goes with Look that changing any kind of service or changing anything like hiring a new person or outsourcing something else. There's a lot of onboarding time or transition time. So I, I think you should always expect that three to six months of just transition Team. Change management. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we like to look at, we have like a accounting department roles and accountability matrix. We do We're like, we break out every part of the accounting function from the AP process, from the AR process, like from when you close a customer to who sends the invoice to who applies the payment, all those individual tasks, right? Because if there's a certain point where momentum takes over versus somebody in-house, we want to make sure that that's like very clear for everybody. This is good. Hopefully everybody found this helpful. Hopefully everybody found how much you should pay for an accountant useful. I think a lot of accountants are probably going to find this helpful as well. Accountants have a hard time figuring out their worth sometimes and charging the right prices. I think you do a good job of that. That's why we have to do this episode. But a lot of accountants are undercharging for their services out there. Oh, well, so. I undercharge. I'm terrible at it. Terrible. Yeah. Well, we're all I act like better. I'm not, but we're I'm terrible. Better. Cool. You, all right. You talk the talk. I talk to talk. Dope. Do I walk the walk? All right, mm, thanks. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. All right. See you Thank later. Thank you all Scotty. for listening. If you're enjoying this, leave us a rating or tap a tap a review thing. Subscribe, like all the things. Contact us should you need any help with accounting or taxes. Yeah, momentumaccounting.com for me. Badget NC for me. If we're talking <laughs> websites, calls to action. Peace out, homies.
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you're drowning in cash flow issues. You run a business, but feel like it's running you. Customers won't pay. But you got bills due. It appears you won't have enough for payroll coming up soon. It seems like you're running nowhere fast. You work hard, but never able to withdraw cash from the business. You get more customers, hire more employees, but still take home hardly anything. You feel like you're on a hamster wheel, frustrated, because the battle's always uphill. Even though you got a bookkeeper on your team, they send you reports, but you don't really know what they mean. Your CPA doesn't understand a thing about your business, at least that's how it seems. But if you want to get above water and grow, check out the Cash Flow Show. This is the Cash Flow Show, where we help the small business gain momentum and become profitable. Like getting paid on time, profitability, and managing your bottom line, payroll best practices, the best apps to use, and cash flow forecasting tools. So if you're a small business owner, your help's right around the corner. Fret not, tune in as Scott and Nicole help you reach your goals on the Cash Flow Show. This is the Cash Flow Show, where we help the small business gain momentum and become profitable. This is the Cash Take you far. Cash flow show. Tune in with Nicole and OKR.